Hello, this video is about the welding practice. In this video, we will give you awareness about what are the welding techniques, how to do arc welding and what are the good practices while we do welding. Let us know the definition of welding. Welding is the process of joining two components. I have a component in my right hand, I have a component in my left hand. It's a process where these two components get joined permanently at their molecular level and it's a permanent joining. Before we proceed further, it is very important that we know the history of welding. I am going to take you all back to the industrial revolution and I am talking of the year 1750 where a very primitive form of welding called forge welding was used. Let me demonstrate to you what this forge welding was. I have two components to be welded. These are the areas that need to be welded. In the forge welding process, they used to heat the entire area where the welding has to take place of component 1. Similarly, they used to heat the entire area of component 2. They used to bring them close and then hammer it continuously so that it fuses. Because of the heat and the hammer, the metals got fused at that temperature. The forge welding that was described a little earlier was in existence for more than a century. Only in the year 1886, an English engineer by name Elihu Thompson came up with the concept of electric resistance welding. One of the most common welding process that exists even now is the electric arc welding. In any kind of welding, there are four elements which are involved. Element 1, the two components to be welded. Element 2, a filler material. This filler material in technical terms is called as an electrode which has a coating over it. The filler material in the case of electric arc welding is called as an electrode. If you can see, this is the material that gets fused. This is the bare milestone material that gets fused and over this is a coating. This coating is called as a flux. It is called flux because it flows and then conceals from oxidation taking place. Element number 3, a heat source. Element number 4, some kind of a shield to prevent oxidation from taking place. If you look around you, it could be in your house, it could be in your college, in your classroom or the workshop, cinema theatre. Across all places, you would see numerous places where welding has been put to use. Let us have a few places in and around me where I stand in front of you where all we can see welding in place. I am standing in front of a diesel engine which is coupled to a generator there. As you can see, this portion is the radiator for the engine and this is the tank portion where it holds the water for cooling purpose. If you can see here, the entire tank is welded. This is one sample where we see welding in place. As we move a little behind, I am going to take you through the generator and here you can see this is the lifting hook. This hook is used to lift the generator up while I assemble and disassemble the generator from the engine. You can see this is the area where the welding hook is welded to the main body of the generator. If I look like this, I can identify various samples where welding is done. If you can see the entire base is welded. All the areas around the base or the frame is completely welded. I am standing next to a chain pulley block which is mounted on a frame. If I look at this frame, the entire frame, you can see a lot of areas where welding has happened. For example, this is the area where you can see welding. If I come down, all this is welded. Even here, all this is welded. Here, it is all welded. So, on a frame as well, we can observe so much of welding 
in practice. Let me show you another few places where we can see welding has been performed. This is a table and on, on the table has been mounted on a frame. This is a frame and on this frame you can see this is the area where welding has happened. This area is where welding has happened. And just next to the table is a chair. It's an iron chair and all areas you can see welding has been done. All these areas are where welding has happened. We learnt the definition of welding. We became aware of the history of welding. We now know the four elements of welding and we also saw a few examples of welding. Now it is time to see the practice of welding. Before going to the actual welding practice, let us know about the safety precautions. Protect yourself and others. Or craze can injure your eyes and burn the skin. Use enough ventilation. Keep fumes and rays and gases away from your breathing zone. Wear correct eye, ear and body protection. My colleague is wearing all the safety aspects, goggles, apron, gloves and safety shoes. We will weld a T-joint. For the T-joint, I am having two work pieces. In these two work pieces, I am going to do the T-joint. See, now I joined like this. If I inverted, this is like a T-shape. That is why it is called as a T-joint. In this T-joint, this work piece it has to stick in the front end and the rear end so that the tack we have to put the tack in the front and the rear this workpiece thickness is 10 mm so i am going to use the 3.15 dia of electrode and current 100 to 130 amps current we are going to use now I am going to stick the two parts initially, otherwise the position will slowly will change like this. We will never get the T shape, that is why sticking is very very important. So stick the front end and the rear end, it is called as a tack welding, tack T A C H, that is a tack welding, tack it in the front and the rear, just only one touch in the electrode, take it out and the rear end touch it only once and remove the electrode. Now this is the tack welding, tack welding in the front and the rear end. Furtherly it will not move, so it is in the same T shape. Now in this straight path. In the straight path, I am going to build. So, initially you touch the work piece and take the electrode, then move along with the straightness of the path. If you touch in between the work piece, what will happen? It will stick in the work pieces. Furtherly, the splatter mark will produce. So, keep away some distance and do the building along with the straight path. The same, same thing we have to do it in the next side also. Now, my colleague will demonstrate actual building. After the welding, we have to remove the slab which is deposited in the welding. For that, we have to use a 
chipping hammer to remove the slag. After removing the slag, we have to clean with the wire brush. We have to clean with the wire brush to clean this welding part. The T-joint is complete in all aspects.